Hallelujah. Glory to God in the highest. We honor you, King Jesus. We bless your name. Hallelujah. You rule, you reign, you have dominion and authority. You are the Lord of Lord and King of Kings. You are the Alpha and the Omega, beginning and the ending. You are the bread of life. We thank you, Lord God, for being our refuge and our fortress, our very present help in trouble. We honor you, King Jesus, for who you are. You are the rock upon which we stand. You are our conquering king. You conquered all of our foes and you gave us the victory. Bless your name, oh God. Father, I bless you. I thank you. I praise you for this day, God, that you created, that we can rejoice and be glad in it. Today's devotional, wonderful counselor, today I worship you because of who you are and i honor you for what for that for i honor you for what you have done for me your sacrifice allows me to have everything i need i am set up emotionally spiritually and physically financially and relationship wise all material things i need and want are available to me it is the time to align myself with your spiritual truth. I will pray and set up for my victory. I am repositioning myself by repenting unto you, Lord God. I am getting ready for an almighty powerful breakthrough, overflow, for the abundance to occur in my life. I will unite with the saints. It is time to celebrate my life in my life it is time to reposition myself by repenting to you lord god i'm getting ready for an I'm almighty powerful breakthrough overflow for the abundancy to occur in my life i will unite with the saints it is time to celebrate my lord my savior and my king today i will sacrifice from doing those things not of you lord jesus i will be obedient to your word my heart is renewed in you father now let my ears open up and be sensitive to your voice receiving your divine direction this is the day the lord has made i shall rejoice and bask in it because i have more of you god Father, in the name of Jesus, God, I come thanking you for your presence today. I thank you for your anointing, God, destroying every yoke. Father, I thank you that you remove every burden off our shoulders, the spirit of heaviness, the spirit of conviction, the spirit of anger, the spirit of bitterness, the spirit of resentment, the spirit of retaliation, the spirit of frustration, the spirit of sickness, the spirit of disease. God, we bind it in the name of Jesus and send it back to the pit of hell once it come from. I loose the spirit of joy, meekness, gentleness, forbearance, temperance, forgiveness, righteousness, truth, the love of God to burn our hearts, O oh God. Whatever it is we have that we're holding on to that's not of God, that you break it off our minds, O oh God, that we no longer be held in captivity and bondage by the enemy, O oh God, because of the reasonings of our minds. Doesn't matter what people may do to us or try to say about us, God, scandalize our names. Many of they that rise up against me, many of them that say of my soul, there is no help for him in God. But thou, O Lord, art shield about us. You're the glory and the lift of our heads. And Father, in the name of Jesus, I come saying thank you. That Father God, when the enemy comes in, Father, against us one way, you said he will flee seven ways. Father, every accusation, every demonic force that risen against us, O God, to tear us down because of the blood of Jesus Christ, because we moved on past, Father, the things we've done in the past, O God, they want to hold us in captivity and bondage. Father, we thank you that we've been set free by the blood of the lamb your word tells that he who the son is set free is free indeed and lord god we stand on the promises of your word we bind oh god everything that's not like god that's coming against us god we stand on the word of truth knowing that this is the victory overcome the world even our faith as it rests in you god 
Lord, speak to our hearts tonight by divine revelation. Allow the engrafted word of Christ to be embedded in our hearts, O oh God, to strengthen us, to empower us, to keep standing. And having done all the stand that we put on the full arm of God to stand against all attacks of the enemy, O oh God, we will not bow down to Baal. We will not bow down on the pressure. We will not fall back in resentment, God, but we'll stand in the blood of Jesus Christ who cleanses us from all sin and iniquity. You say, whoever is born of God does not sin because his seed remains in him. And we thank you that the seed of God through Jesus Christ dwells in us, O oh God, that we've been cleansed from a sin conscious that our minds have been renewed, our, our spirits been made new, Father God, because therefore, if any man be in Christ Jesus, he is a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. And we thank you, Lord God, that we receive the new relationship. We receive the new mindset. We receive the new attitude. We receive the new heart. As you took, take it out of us, oh God, that stony heart of flesh, you gave us the heart of your spirit. And we thank you for it, God, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. God is so good. You know, this is the day the Lord has made. We can rejoice and be glad in it. It doesn't matter what comes our way. Having done all the stand, we can stand firm in the faith of Jesus Christ with confidence, knowing that it is God who is working in us to will and to do according to his good pleasure. You know, it doesn't matter what people say about us. It doesn't matter what people do to us, what they may try try to scandalize your name, might, might try to uh, uh, remind you of all your past failures, mistakes, and all those different things that you've done wrong. A whole list of stuff we can go through that we've done wrong in our entire lives. But I want you to know tonight that you've been set free by the blood of the Lamb. Jesus has taken your sins and your lawless deeds, your crooked ways, your messed up mindset, your, your arrogant attitude attitudes he took all that mess and nailed it to the cross that we can be set free and because he set us free we're no longer bound to the things of the past we're no longer bound to people who hold on to unforgiveness we're not bound to the, the slandering words that people say about us we're not bound to none of that mess if they choose not to let go you have to choose to keep moving forward in christ you have to choose it's up to you to either get into a place of resentment, a place of bitterness, a place of despair, a place where your mind is tormented. It's up to you to choose the thoughts you're going to entertain. Are you going to entertain God's thoughts or are you going to entertain the thoughts of the enemy? And I guarantee the enemy's the thought that the mind of the enemy is not going to encourage you. The mind of the enemy is not going to empower you. The mind of the enemy is not going to give you the strength to go on. But you have the mind of Christ. And with the mind of Christ, you can move forward. In the promises God has for your life. As we started talking about on last week, the spirit of haughtiness. Our key verse was Proverbs 16, verse 18. And it says, pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before fall. In the good news translation, it said pride leads to destruction and arrogance to downfall. We have to be in a mindset of humility. In order for our hearts to be humble, we have to think about being humble. We have to get the word in us where the word challenges you, the word provokes you, the word encourages you to walk into a position of humility. And sometimes God will create opportunities to come across in your life to test whether you're humble or you're prideful. You have a choice to make. Any variances from this divine principle that God has placed in his word will bring the haughtiness of a strong, strong man's influence into your life to the degree that whatever we think we are capable of running our lives apart from God. You know, the enemy wants you to think that you don't need God in your life. He wants you to think that you can do everything yourself. True humility is recognizing that all our righteousness is as filthy rags. Isaiah chapter 64, verse 6, and that we can do nothing without the help and direction of God in our lives. The enemy wants you to think that you don't need God. He wants you to think that you can make it through life by your own abilities, your own strength, your, your own way of doing things, your own business, your own vision, your own dreams. 
Your own, your own, own everything, whatever it is you want to do that's your, of yourself. He wants you to think that you don't need God in doing it. So he'll put you in a mindset of pride. So it, everything that you do, it builds up self without God. Self without God is an empty self because you're a dead man walking without God in your life. And many times the enemy wants to remind you that you can do what you want to do because God can't stop you. The enemy wants you to think that I can be successful, I can be prosperous, I can gain all the money I want in life, I can build new barns, everything I want to do in this life, I can do it without God. But I want to remind you tonight, my brothers and sisters, that you can do nothing without God. Without God in your life, your life is an empty shell. You're a dead man walking. Without God's spirit inside of you that produces life on the inside, you're walking in a pathway of gloom and doom and destruction. And the enemy wants you to think that you can make it without God. We must give everything to Jesus. Our own ambitions, our own desires, our own dreams, our own visions, our own concepts, our own ideas, we have to give it to Jesus because without him in your life, you're going down a pathway that leads to nothing but a broken dream. And many people are living in a broken dream because they have a broken mentality. A broken mentality would keep you in the place of bondage. It would keep you in a place where you surrender to a strong man. And the strong man thinks that makes you think that you can do whatever you want to do. That God don't have no influence in your life. How much better it is to relax and give our lives to God. He is the only one who can really make something beautiful out of our lives anyway. God is the only one that has the purpose, the plan, the, 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 the desire, the will for your life that make you prosperous in him. True prosperity people think is, is, is gaining successful things in this world. But I want to tell you, tell you this. True prosperity is Christ Jesus. Because when you become successful in living a life that's pleasing to God, seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, God said, all these things shall be added unto you. What things? Prosperity, good health, a sound mind, strength, healing. Every promise God has in his book is yours when you walk in a place of surrender to the Lord Jesus Christ. We can trust God not to take advantage of us when we release our lives into his hands. But many people find it a struggle, a problem in surrendering their lives to the Lord. I want you to know tonight that when you get to the place within yourself where you recognize self can't fix your problems, self can't give you peace of mind, self can't calm your spirit, self can't take away your, your, your heartaches and pains, when you recognize that you can't do anything without God in your life, God will come in. He will come in in the nick of time and give you that calmness of your spirit, give you that peace that surpasses all understanding or comprehension. He'll give you that hope against hope. He'll give you a satisfying life. He'll give you comfort and joy, strength in times of weaknesses. We don't have to revert backwards to the things of the world just to have success in life. But when we go forward in the promises God has for our lives, everything else will line up with what God has for you. But it's up to you to either yield, surrender, and release, or continue to resist, oppose, and rebel. Yield, surrender, and release, or resist, oppose, and rebel. It's up to you to make that choice. I don't know about you today, but I choose to live in righteousness. I choose to live in God's promises. I choose to live by his word. I choose to study God's word because without God's word, 
We're leaving ourselves vulnerable for the open attacks of the enemy. And the enemy definitely is like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. If you don't give yourself to the Lord on a daily basis, you're leaving your gateway open. You're leaving a breach in your in your in your foundation, a breach in your walls. You're leaving a breach in your heart, so the enemy can come in and out as he chooses. But tonight, God said, we gotta seal the breach. We gotta seal the breaches of rebellion. We gotta seal the breaches of resistance. We gotta seal the breaches of, of, of stubbornness, pridefulness, haughtiness, arrogancy. We gotta seal the breach. Cause those breaches are the destruction the enemy uses to assassinate God's plan for your life. But one thing about God, he will guide us into exact place where we can develop to our full potential. God will lead you in the path that he chose because he said the steps of a good man, a good woman, they're ordered by the Lord and he delights in his way. When you delight in God's way, God promises, I will lead you down the pathway that will be fruitful and abundant. Only if you learn how to yield, surrender, and release. Amen. Thank you, cuz. God bless you. And the bonus is that when we have peace in our hearts and a sense of fulfillment in our souls while it is going on, God said the bonus that he releases in our life is a peace of heart, a sense of fulfillment in our souls. Why? Because I'm giving my heart to him. I give myself away. I give myself away so you can use me. When you give yourself away and you let God use you the way he designed for you to be and to choose what he wants to be in your life, the direction he has for you to go, you would have a peace of heart, fulfillment <coughs> excuse me, in your soul because God will satisfy you with good things. He said there's no good thing would he withhold from them who walk rightly before him. God promises that. That's a covenant. We can go to bank on that one. God said he would not change his mind about his word, about us. Why? Because he loves us unconditionally. He didn't say we wouldn't have problems. He didn't say folk would hate on you. He didn't say that when the storm of life comes, the pressures get hard to run and, re and retreat, to go hide under the rock. He said, keep on persevering. Keep on standing. Keep enduring. Why? Because the enemy is going to come to attack you. That's his job. It's to attack you. But he said, blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Your satisfaction comes when you get into God's word, and God's word is revealed to you with revelation and insight from the heart of God. In Matthew chapter 5, verse verse. Uh, Nine, it said, blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Verse 10, blessed are they when they are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is revealed when you get a revelation of Jesus' authority, Jesus being the kingdom being released into you which is his power, which is the word of God. The kingdom has come, which is to change the way we think. Many times, many problems continue to keep happening in a cycle in our lives it's because we haven't tapped into the kingdom. You tap into the kingdom, righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. That's the kingdom of God. When you get in the kingdom of God, God's kingdom begins revealed to you who you are, the authority you have against the enemy. You can operate in kingdom authority to tear down the strongholds of wickedness, to tear down the strongholds of bondage of the past, to tear down the old mentality, the works of the flesh, the things that hold you in captivity. The kingdom gives you the authority. You can speak into the kingdom and decree finances to come into your hands. It'll happen when you walk by faith and not by sight. Kingdom authority. Give you the power, 
gives you the title deed, the rights to tap into God's kingdom to release what you want to happen in your life. The reason Jesus prayed, our Father which is in heaven, how will be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Why? Because he knew the kingdom had to come in order to operate in our lives. When the kingdom of God comes, the kingdom brings everything, every precious and promise that God has for you into your life. But the enemy wants you to be blindsided from the kingdom. He don't want you to see the kingdom. He knows when you see the kingdom, you begin to see what God sees. You hear what God hears. You speak what God says to speak. Then you do what God says to do. And you go where God wants you to go. But when we have the basic agreements worked out between us and God as, the two as to who is the boss, it leaves us free to consecrate, consecrate on all of our God-given Oh my God, this is so good. Abilities on the challenges of life. When we recognize that God is the boss in our lives, I'm not the boss of myself. I don't have a power of myself. I can't control my own self without the Holy Spirit. Then we have an agreement with God that God's abilities, God's DNA, begin to flow through your bloodstream to bring out his creativity, to bring out his nature, out of your life to give you his mindset there is no other life that even approaches to having what God has in our lives many people live a false satisfying life because they choose to leave God out the equation and when you choose to keep God out the equation you leave yourself open for the portals of the enemy to come in and out of your life, to wreak havoc in your life, to slander you, to persecute you, to tear you down, to destroy you. Everything God promised you, the enemy comes to destroy you. He said rejoice in Matthew chapter 5 verse 12. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad. For great is your reward in heaven. Why? Because before this verse, he said, blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my name's sake. Then he said rejoice and be exceedingly glad for great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they the prophets which went before you. You know one thing God reminded me recently? When you under persecution, when you under the pressures of life and the enemy is attacking you on every side, you can't change that. You can't even stop it. You just got to go with the flow. But I found out the key. No matter all, how bad all this stuff around you is going on, he can't touch your spirit. Can't touch the God in you. Matter of fact, when the enemy thinks he's attacking you, he's attacking the Christ in you, who is your defense, who is your shield and your buckler. And God promises when the enemy comes in like a flood, he will raise a standard against him. So God isn't afraid of the enemy. He's not afraid to exalt you in your due season. When you trust in God and you allow him to eliminate all the attacks and the things the enemy brings against you, even the ill feelings we have sometimes towards one another, and walk in unity and endeavor to keep the spirit of peace in our hearts, God will lead you up the success ladder. God will open up the avenues to prosper you. God will open up the avenues to give you success in everything you do. But the key is Joshua 1 and 8. He told Joshua, he said to meditate on the word of God day and night. Keep it in the midst of your heart. Keep it in your mouth. Don't let it depart from you. Keep it in your heart. He said you keep that word. He said the word of God will cause you to have good success and profit everywhere you go. But you got to know the word. You got to get in the word. Because when you get in the word, the word begins to show you the direction. It gives you wisdom. It gives you understanding. It gives you guidance. It gives you structure. It gives you counsel. God's word will give you everything you're seeking when you seek first his kingdom. We don't have to sit around feeling frustrated because we aren't becoming a great earth shaker we envision ourselves to be. When we learn what God is teaching us, 
He will exalt us whereas we are able to handle it. In other words, God will exalt you when he knows you are in the mindset and the right heart to receive that, 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 uh, uh, that promotion or that elevation. God will elevate you only to the degree where he knows your, your capacity can handle it. If you can't handle it, God's not going to exalt you further than what you can handle. But the enemy wants you to think, I don't need God. I can do it my way. I can get up the career ladder the best way I can. If it means stepping on people, hurting people in the process, I can do just what I want to do to get success. This makes it possible to appreciate and enjoy what God gives us to the fullest extent. When God exalts us to, according to, his, to our abilities, where he can trust us and depend on us, God is pleased with that. The great robbery. Check this out. The haughty spirit attempts to rob us of God's best for our lives. We recognize him either in our own lives or in the lives of others when we encounter the following symptoms. Pride, arrogance, contentiousness, scornful, anger, obstinacy, stubbornness, rebellion, and boastfulness. Here are some scriptures that speak of these things. Only by pride comes contention, but the, with the well advised is wisdom. Only by pride comes contention or strife, but with the well advised wisdom. Proverbs 13 verse 10. Proverbs 13 verse, verse 10. The lofty looks of a man shall be humble, and the haughtiness of men shall be bowed down, and the Lord alone shall be exalted in that day. Isaiah chapter 2 verse 11. Proud and haughty scorners is his name who dealeth in proud wrath. Proverbs 21 verse 24. 21st chapter verse 24. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness is as idolatry and iniquity. 1 Samuel 15 chapter verse 23. These six things doth the Lord hate. Yea, seven are an abomination to him. A proud look. You know, I'm going to turn it down. That, that's a good scripture there. Proverbs 6. Proverbs 6. Hallelujah. Glory to God in the highest. Proverbs 6, verse 7, 16 and 17. It says it this way. A, it says, These six things does the Lord hate. Yea, seven are an abomination to, unto him, a proud look, a lying tongue, and hands that shed innocent blood, and a heart that devises wickedness or a wicked imagination, and feet to be swift in running to mischief, a false witness that speaketh lies, and he that soweth discord among brethren. My son, keep thy father's commandments, and forsake not the laws of thy mother. Bind them continually upon thy heart and tie them about thy neck. We have to take the word of God seriously. We have to keep the word before us day and night. We have to bind it. He said, keep it in your heart and bind it around your neck. Why? Because if you keep the word close to you, anytime the enemy comes to test and try and prove you, you will find yourself passing the test because you've been standing Connected, relationally, tied with the word of God. Here's another. Behold, this was the iniquity of thy sister Sodom. Pride. It says pride, fullness of bread, and abundance of idleness was in her and in her daughters. Neither did she strengthen her hand of the poor and the needy. And they were haughty and committed abomination before me. Therefore I took them away as I saw good. Ezekiel chapter 16, verse 49 and 50. So we got, got to stay in the word. When we see these things in our lives, obstructing spiritual progress or trying to take over, we must immediately take a necessary measure to get them out of our lives. You have to recognize when the enemy has planted something in your life that's not of God and know how 
to stand against it. Because the enemy is very cunning and very crafty. He's sneaky. And he's doing everything in his power to destroy your character, destroy your identity, destroy your nature, destroy who you are in God. In the book of James, James gave some helpful advice when he said, Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he shall lift you up. James chapter 4, verse 10. It said, Note that the subject is understood here. You humble yourselves. We are the catalyst in this process. We make up our minds and wills to humble, humbly accept God's will for our lives and walk in that will, recognizing that only God can make us into something useful for him. So we're the catalyst when it comes to humility. It's up to us to make a choice every day of your life to humble yourself or to oppose God, to submit to God or resist God, to be steadfast in the faith or fall away from the faith. You have a choice to make. It's up to you to determine within yourself Am I going to continue to walk by faith in the truth of God's word? Or am I going to continue to walk according to my own dictates of my flesh, my own desires, my own attitude, my own character, do whatever I want to do, whatever pleases my flesh, I'm going to do it because that's what I want to do. The flesh is a dirty booger. That flesh will cause you to revert back into the things that God delivered you from. Because the enemy is so crafty He's not going to try, test, tempt you with anything that you're not familiar with. He's going to test, try, and prove you with the things that you've been delivered from. Doesn't matter what it is God brought you out of, the enemy knows if I can take you back in it, I can control your destiny. I can control your purpose. I can change your identity. I can change your mindset. I can pull you back into darkness where the light of God has no more power over you. But we have to make a choice. And it starts with forgiveness. If we walked in that way of resisting God, we need to come to the place of, re of repenting. If we have pride in our hearts, arrogance, stubbornness, rebellion, wickedness, iniquity, it doesn't matter what it is. We must begin by asking God's forgiveness for forgiveness. And the way we can start is that, Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus. I see that I have not allowed you to reign supreme in my life. Forgive me for this terrible sin. I humbly bow before you with a contrite spirit and ask that you make something beautiful out of my life. Satan, in the name of Jesus, I bind your haughty spirit according to Matthew 18, chapter verse 18, which states, Whatsoever ye shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. I recognize you for what you are, a thief and a robber. I refuse to allow you to lead me away from God's will for my life. Then we have to loose the spirit of God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father, for your forgiveness of this terrible sin. According to Matthew 18, chapter verse 18, which promise, whatsoever ye shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. And I loose a humble spirit and a spirit of holiness in my life to lead me in the path that you choose for me to walk. I recognize that I can find that path by best reading and studying your word, which is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Psalms 119 chapter verse 105. Thank you, Lord, for hearing and answering my prayer. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, then that spirit is being broken off of you right now. I believe that when we get in the agreement with God's word, God's word will overpower the thoughts of the enemy he planted in your mind and your heart, the seeds of iniquity, the seeds of wickedness, the seeds of rebellion, the seeds of stubbornness, the, the seeds of, of haughtiness, arrogance. See, it's so much stuff that the enemy attacks us with as believers. But God promises it's being broken off your mind, off your heart, when you surrender and you yield and release yourself into his hands. 
Galatians chapter 6 verse 4 says each one should test their own actions. Then can they take pride in themselves alone without comparing themselves to someone else. Galatians chapter 6 verse 4. We have to test our actions to see if we have pride, a godly pride, or sinful pride. There are two types of pride. Pride that's selfish and a pride that's in God's that's humble. It's up to you to decide how your life is going to line up. Are you comparing yourself to other people? Are you trying to measure up with other people? Trying to out succeed other people? Outdo other people on your own strength, your own efforts? Or are you trying to humble yourself and allow God to cause you to be exceeded above your haters and your elevators? God has a way you can't go over. God has a way you can't go under. God has a way you can't go around. You must come in at the door. you got to come in at the door to Jesus Christ, giving him your all in all, surrender everything you have to him, and allow the word of God to empower you, to change you, to build you up, to, to give you a new identity. God's word will do just that. Isaiah chapter 2 verse 12. It says, The Lord Almighty has a day in store for all the proud and lofty. For all that is exalted, they will be humbled. God has set a day for the people who continues to choose to live a proud and lofty life. He said there is coming a day where you will not measure up to God's standards. You will not measure up at the gate. When you come in for the Lord Jesus Christ, that beam of seat of Christ, the judgment seat of Christ, he says you will not measure up because he said you're going to be humble. You may not be humbled in this life, but I guarantee you're going to be humble when he casts you to the lake of fire because there, there's no way of getting out of that. Isaiah chapter 23 verse 9. The Lord Almighty planned it to bring down her pride and all her splendor and to humble all those who are renowned on earth. God already said a day that even an enemy in his splendor is going to be brought down to nothing. But you have to determine in yourself from this day forward, I'm going to live my life pleasing to the Lord. I'm going to live my life being humble, committed to the cause and reason why God created me. A lot of times, a lot of churches don't even teach the people who they really are and who they are. People are going through the motions in church. They're not learning their true identity. They're not learning their purpose. They're not learning why they were created. But I'm going to tell you this one nugget. We all are created for God's glory. We were created to promote God's glory in the earth. To let a dying world know that Jesus Christ is Lord. And that he's coming back again to take his bride to glory. And when you give your life to him, he will change your whole lifestyle. Doesn't matter what life you're living right now. He promises he'll take that filthy life that you're living. He'll cleanse you by the blood of the Lamb. And give you a new identity. Give you a new nature. Give you a new garment. He exchange that mind of the world and give you the mind of God. The Bible says, let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus. James chapter 4, verse 6. But he gives grace, but he gives us more grace. That is why the scripture says, God opposed the proud, but shows favor to the humble. I tell you every day of my life, I walk in favor. You can walk in favor. Why? Because your confession must line up with God's word that I'm a person that's favored of God. If you're favored of God, then you're humbled by God. You don't mind giving your life to God. You don't mind giving everything you are to him that he would have his way in your lives. And when you do that, everywhere you go, favor will meet you there. If you, you go into to a business and you need favor of that business, 
God will give you favor. You get credit. And all of a sudden you like, you know your credit report shows that you got a real bad credit score. And you decide, well, I'm going to apply for this credit card anyway. I'm going to trust God. He going to go beyond this negative report. Because I choose to believe the report of the Lord. And because I choose to believe his report, his report, God shows me favor. He do the same thing for you. He will show you favor. It doesn't matter what comes against you. You keep on standing on God's word and know that God's word will always validate who he is to you. His word will always cause you to find favor. He says in Psalms 23, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. And we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. God's goodness, his favor, his mercy, his compassion will follow you all the days of your life. James 4 verse 10, humble yourselves before the Lord. He will lift you up. God will lift you up above everything the enemy says you cannot have. The devil says your finances can always be poor. Your bank account will always be on zero. God says, nope, I'm going to lift you up above poverty. I'm going to lift you up above lack. I'm going to lift you up above sickness and disease. I'm going to lift you up above mental torment. I'm going to lift you up above prideful moments, fearful moments. Those things the enemy brings against you to try to stop you in your tracks. God says, you keep persevering. Keep on moving forward. Don't you quit. Don't you stop. Many of them that rise up against you, many of them that say of your soul, there's no help for you in God. But God says, I will be the glory and the lift of your head. All you got to do is keep trusting him. Keep standing on God's word. You stand on God's word, God's word will back you up. God's word will cover you. God's word will protect you. God's word will shield you. God's word will carry you through the most dangerous situations in your life. God promises. Verse 3, Psalm 3 said, But thou, o Lord, art a shield for me, my glory, and the lifter of my head. Verse 4, I cried unto the Lord with my voice, and he heard me. Out his holy hill. Who are you crying to today? Are you crying to the Lord in your despairing moments? Are you crying to the Lord when your finances is on zero? Are you crying out to the Lord when you don't know how you're going to pay your next bills, take care of your children, don't know how you're going to do this or do that? Are you crying out to the Lord? He says, when you cry to the Lord, David said, I cried and he heard me from his holy hill. The reason why I can look to the hill which come my help. Because my help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. I, he said, he laid me down and I slept. I wake for the Lord sustain me. A humble person. No matter what's going on in your life. When you're humbled. Where there's no pride in your heart. He says, I lay me down and slept. I awake. For the Lord sustain me. God's sustaining grace will meet your every need. God's sustaining grace will cover you. God's sustaining grace will show you favor and promotions. God's sustaining grace will put food on your table, clothes on your back, gas in your car. God's sustaining grace gives you traveling grace every day of your life as you go into from one place to the other. Why? Because he promises. Then David puts it like this. I will not be afraid of 10,000 people that have set themselves against me round about. It doesn't matter what people say about you. It doesn't matter how much they threaten you. It doesn't matter what they do to try to come against you. David said, I will not be afraid of 10,000 people that set themselves against me round about. Arise, O Lord. Save me, O my God. For thou hast smitten all my enemies on the cheek, cheekbone, and thou hast broken the teeth of the ungodly. When you humble yourself before the mighty hand of God, and stuff starts happening in your life, gets crazy, gets chaotic, 
Don't worry about it. Pray about it. Matter of fact, put a praise on it. Because I found out that when the heat gets real hot, put a praise on it. And I guarantee God will calm the enemy from attacking you. Everything he throws at you to try to stop you in your track, to try to get selfish, get prideful, get arrogant, get bitter, all this stuff because of what's going on in your life that you don't understand sometimes why they happen the way they do. God said, put a praise on it. When you put a praise, you're giving God the, the accolades that's, that's due him. You're giving him the honor. You're giving him the glory. Your praise gives God glory. <clears throat> and when you give God the glory, God responds to that. He'll open up the portals of heaven, begin to rain down the blessings you don't even have enough room to receive. He will overshower you with so much blessings you don't have enough room to receive it. You have to give it away. Psalm I said, I'm so blessed. I got to give it away. God is a God of the overflow. And I guarantee after receiving this word, you're going to find yourself receiving blessings upon blessings. The avenues of promise is going to come more fruition, invisible to you. You're going to see God in the fullness of who he is. Every promise, every precious blessing and promise God has for your life is going to begin to manifest in your life because you're receiving this word that God has for you. Don't worry about what the enemy brings against you. Don't, don't fear. Don't give up. But keep on standing. Having done all the stand, stand therefore with the full arm of God. To quench all the fiery attacks of the enemy. Amen. Amen. I thank you for tuning in tonight. Next week we're going to start a subject. The spirit of heaviness. The spirit of heaviness. Which deals with excessive mourning and grief. And sorrow and pity. Self-pity. Rejection. Insomnia. Broken hearts. Despair. Dejections. Hopelessness. Depression. Suicidal thoughts, heaviness, inner hurts, and torn spirits. We're going to deal with this on next week. Because many people, even the body of Christ, are suffering from the spirit of heaviness. You don't have pride, you might have heaviness. If you don't have heaviness, you might have brokenness. If you don't have brokenness, you might be in mourning. There's so many different things that stem from one issue to the next. And the enemy does everything he can to do to blind you from seeing God in your situation. But I encourage you tonight to stay in the word. Get the word in your spirit. Get the word in your heart. Allow that word to manifest in you. And I guarantee chains are going to be broken. Shackles are going to be loosed. Your mind is going to begin to think and change in accordance to God's word. And everything that's not like God in you is going to start becoming visible. Because sometimes we have, have problems and habits and addictions we don't even recognize because we're so used to it. And God told me this when I was studying this word about pride. He said, don't be ashamed to admit you got faults. Don't be ashamed to, to admit you messed up. Don't be ashamed... To acknowledge the things in your life that's not of God. And lay it at the altar. Because when you lay it at the altar. God says I will take those things. I will wash you clean. With clean water. By the Holy Spirit. I will cleanse you by the blood. From a sinful conscience. And then you can do as Romans 8 and 1. Says, Therefore is now no condemnation. To them who are in Christ Jesus. Who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit because you will no longer find yourself being victimized by condemnation what people try to project upon you or to imprison you in because you've been set free through the son of Jesus Christ through Jesus Christ our Lord so I thank you again so let's pray Heavenly Father we thank you for your lesson tonight I pray that something has been said or done that will promote your glory in the lives of the hearers. That, Father, we have ears to hear 
that we hear what the Spirit says to the church. That you reprove us, you prune us, you refine us, you refresh us, you renew us, you replenish us with the things we need in our lives that's from you and wash us clean by the blood of the Lamb. Then I thank you, Lord God, that you're faithful to forgive us for our sins. So Lord, forgive us for our sins, knowingly and unknowingly, and wash us clean in the blood of the Lamb. Then I thank you that we have been forgiven. We've been sanctified. We've been set free. Now we can walk in holiness and truth and righteousness because you are our God. And there's no one like you in all the earth. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. If you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I want you to repeat this prayer to me, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus. I acknowledge that I am a sinner, and I ask you to come into my heart, forgive me for my sins, knowingly and unknowingly, and to wash me clean, purify my thoughts, change my life, and become my Lord and Savior. And I thank you for saving me. Then I ask you to fill me with the Holy Spirit, and that with power to be a witness for you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. You prayed that prayer. Welcome to the family of God. The whole host of heaven is rejoicing over one sinner that turned his life over to the Lord. Amen. 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 Again, I thank you for tuning in tonight. I pray something has been said that would encourage you to get in God's word, that would help guide you, instruct you, and counsel you as you study God's word, pray for understanding. Ask God to give you wisdom and clarity of what you're reading in his word. And I guarantee the Holy Spirit inside of you will give you the clarity and understanding that you need to get a message, a rhema word from the heart of God. A rhema word is a spoken word from God. When you get a rhema word, it's coming hot off the press. And that word will begin to speak to your spirit not the soulless realm, but the spirit realm inside of you. And the soulless realm will begin to humble itself and be submitted and committed to the cause of Christ. Again, I thank you for tuning in. Until next week, God bless you. Walk in the power of the word of God in humility and allow the spirit of God to guide you in truth and righteousness. Shalom. Peace be unto you.